Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Kim Albee is sharing her wealth of online marketing experience with us. Kim is the founder of Janu, spelt G-E-N-O-O. -O. Kim, did I pronounce that right? You did. Ah, good. Kim is the founder of Janu, spelled G-E-N-O-O, -O, and the B2B online marketing group on LinkedIn. She helps clients attract quality leads and establish the engagement that is necessary for their sustained growth. Kim is on faculty at CEO Space and is the online marketing expert on the Sales Expert channel. Attendees, if you have any questions for Kim, please type them into the chat. And in the course of her talk, I will interrupt her and pose your questions. Uh, there is no need for you to take extensive notes. By noon tomorrow, uh, the uh, video recording of Kim's talk will be published on uh, the VBN YouTube channel and you'll be sent a link. Kim, are you ready to rock the stage? Sure. Then take her away, she's all yours. All right. All right, well, hi everybody, and I just uh, thank you for having me, and um, I'm gonna jump right in here. We're gonna talk about the top five secrets to online marketing for wildly successful results. And one of the things you can do is if you type into the chat, so if everybody opens your chat up and you just type in, when you think about online marketing, what are the questions or what are the challenge that comes up for you right away? Like what is it, what's right there for you when you think about online marketing, you think about wildly successful results, what's your question, what's your challenge, you know, what seems to be your frustration? If you can just type that into chat, just to give me a sense of that. Um, I ask this question quite a bit of people. Okay, I like that. The right approach to online marketing, getting my emails open, day-to-day -day content. I love it. This is great. So whatever your challenge is, whatever your question is, just type that in. Um, but one of the things um, we're going to do is we're going to be looking at what it really takes. What is, what are the, the, the real secrets and the things that need to happen to make you, you know, to have you get the results you want. So let me tell you just a little bit about myself. My company is Janu, um, and you can see that down in the lower corner. I'm the president of Janu. I founded Janu. I'm on faculty at CEO Space. I'm the online marketing expert at Bright Talk Sales Experts Channel, and I'm also a geek. So back in the day when I came up with our software uh, to do this, um, I was pretty much uh, thinking, well, I'll put it out there, and then it will just grow its user base. And I was very, very surprised to find out that Build It and They Will Come is a movie. Um, it's not reality. And so I had to dive in and learn marketing. So I've spent many, many, many years now really diving in and learning marketing. And I just happened to try everything, play with everything, and put it together um, in, into systems and things that help people, entrepreneurs, small business, um, coaches and experts grow their business and gain traction. So that's pretty much what it is. One of the things that I am an expert expert at is email marketing and email deliverability. So you're gonna see that our platform is actually one of the top inbox deliverability platforms in the ESP space. So that's uh, email service providing space. So when I talk to people about what we've heard around online marketing and people's frustrations, you're gonna see some things that I think resonate with what you all typed in but how to generate enough immediate interest to get the phone to ring, call to action for people to click on links, getting all the pieces to work seamlessly and on, and on time consistency, activating old leads collected over time but not followed up with, on a shoestring budget, what's the best bang for my buck and why, creating and maintaining a connection to customers through online marketing tools, knowing what marketing tools and techniques are most effective, getting consistent leads and sales, how to find new clients, a detail of all that's required to create all this online marketing stuff, the tech, the prep, all that, how to make sure my messages are heard by the relevant audience, and so many options and so much content creation. How do you know what is the best use of your resources? So, so that's a lot 
of the things that we hear. And there was a lot that we heard, but one of the ones that kind of seemed to sum it all up is engagement is getting more difficult and action as a result of marketing efforts is diminishing. In other words, ROI is dropping. Now, that seems to be out of a, a pretty good range of um, feedback that we've collected and that we've gotten seems to, seems to all correlate around certain categories, if you will. So when you look at all of those challenges, how do we solve them all? So I'm gonna break it down into five, what I call the five secrets to online marketing, and they all sort of interrelate, so you're gonna see that. So let's just start out by talking about lead gen. How many of you are interested in generating more of your perfect potential customers that you can then have and convert into customers and grow your sales, right? So lead gen is something that is, we're always doing. So what I would say is if you have a piece of paper, this is all about attracting. I would write down attract on the piece of paper. It's all about attracting your perfect potential customers. And then you can write right next to it, you can write capture. It's all about capturing their name and email, right? Putting them on a list so that you can start to nurture them, learn more about them, and kind of guide them through their process, right? Through their buying journey, which we'll get to in a second. But so when you look at it, how do you attract your perfect potential customers? What do you use to attract your perfect potential customers? So in order to attract them, you got to have something that is valuable enough that they'll exchange their name and email for it, for sure. That means you've got to have something yummy that will help them solve a problem, handle a frustration, get over a challenge, something like that, that, that is so irresistible that they're like, no problem. Here's my name and email. Give me that thing, right? So you've, in order to do that, you've got to understand who your perfect potential customers are. You've got to be in their world and you've got to have a really good understanding of that, right? So there's all the different mechanisms of lead generation, but that's the core piece that it doesn't matter if you do, if you're in a giveaway, if you give away something that isn't the perfect, what I'll call lead magnet or attractor or free gift for your audience, you're gonna end up with a lot of people that aren't your perfect potential customer. And then you'll wonder why none of them are buying. And you'll think, well, online marketing is just not working, it's so hard. Because it all boils down to that one thing. So, you know, you could do a giveaway, and participate in a promotion. If you have the right gift, there's any number of ways that you can get your gift out in front of your perfect potential customer. But the big secret about all of that is secret number one, that you have got to know your target audience. You've got to understand what their fears, their frustrations, their challenges, all of those things, their aspirations. You really need to understand that. And if you don't do the work up front to really get that clear, then you're going to be, you're going to be rolling the dice with content that you create and whether or not it's going to really attract your perfect potential customers. So this is the unglamorous side of online marketing, but literally, clearly, if you get this right, it makes everything else easier, okay? And we're gonna see that and come back to this because you're gonna see how these all intertwine as we go through this. So any questions around lead generation that you wanna know more about, because we can go down that tunnel in lots of different ways. Anything you do, whether you're buying ads on Facebook, whether you're um, joining networking groups, you have to know what is it that's going to that's gonna grab the fancy, grab the attention of your target audience, right? So the second thing, let's go on. Let's talk about social media. How many of you are active in social media, you know, where it's Facebook or it's LinkedIn or what have you? Because you, what you want to know is, once you know who your perfect potential customers are, where do they hang out? Where do they hang out? Now, the thing, that, the thing that I want you to think about is, I'll give you an example. I was at an event earlier this year, back in the beginning of the year, when we actually could do face-to-face -face events. And I was in San Diego. And I was at this event. And this gal who works with entrepreneurs and small business 
she, we were all kind of in a group exercise at our tables, looking at what's an activity, what's an action that we could be taking, that we could do that's gonna expand our reach, right? And she stood up to share at the end of it, and she said, I'm so excited because what I, I, what I can see I need to do is get onto Instagram. Now, her audience is entrepreneurs and small business. Was that, is that, um, let me ask you guys a question and now you're gonna have to type into the question box but, or the chat box, but is that the social media platform that you would choose? So just type in, what's the social media? So Nathan says no, right? And then, yep, and then Fumi says LinkedIn. Joanna says no, LinkedIn, right? So you wanna think about it's exactly the way that you want to think is like, where does your audience hang out? And how do you maximize that channel? Because it's not about being in all the channels. It's about maximizing your, your effort, right? Like, and being where your perfect potential customer is. So the reach, the other thing I want to talk about too, there's a couple things of social media that I want to talk about. Because a lot of people, we have a, I have a friend who built a pretty good, following in social media. She had a group. Um, she had a good page. She had a lot of people, probably about a thousand people she built that up to. She was very interactive and engaging with them. She met, never moved them onto anything other than social media. She didn't put them into an email list, nothing like that. She just dealt with them there. And her account got hacked and Facebook shut her down. And I got an email going, Kim, do you know anybody at Facebook that I can talk to to figure this out? Because I can't get in. And her whole world was on Facebook. So you want to be really careful about building on rented property. So there's a difference between your own website, your own email list, your own domains that you control, and social media sites that is like rented property. It's like building sand, building on sand. You can't get a good foundation there. You never know. Instagram in one day decided that they're going to kill all their, all their accounts that were meme accounts. They just, they just shut them down one night overnight with no warning. And there was a guy that was putting himself through college because he had gotten up to, I forget, like 13 million followers on his meme account. And he had sponsorships. And he'd sell his sponsorships and that money put him through college. And he woke up one morning and he didn't have an account. Boom. There went his business. There went his income. There one is college uh, payments. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's that's what you want to understand about social. So where does social really thrive? What's what's really great about social media? Because you want to start to look at well, what can I use it for, right? So so social media has a lot of really good aspects to it, and but one of the things that you want to do is you want to think about. Um, the secret number two, which is lev leverage social to drive people to your site and your list. If you can move people from social, so even if you have groups or you have a page, or you have lots of fans on, on Facebook, for instance, if you can move them over to your email list, now you've got something that you own that you can now reach out to. So social media is a great one size fits all post. You can make a post, everybody sees it, whether it's relevant to them or not. The thing about email, and that we'll get to in a minute, but email is, can be personalized, right? So you've got these different aspects, but social is really great if you can leverage social. And if you see the people that are super successful in their business, they leverage social to move people, to drive people over to their site and their list so they can engage them in a better way in a more, and drive them into, into different sales and different engagement and differences that they're making. So secret number two is you really wanna look at how do you leverage social to drive people over to your list and your site. That means you've gotta understand, now you'll see it's tied in with secret number one. You have got to know who your perfect potential customer is because you've gotta know how to talk to them, how to make something yummy, how to make something irresistible, how to entice them to move off that social platform over to your site, if even only for a few minutes, to opt in for something that they can see would be valuable for them, 
okay? So you want to think about that. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is we did a giveaway over the summer. And so we were looking at people to be in the giveaway. And this one gal approached me and she says, well, I've got 20,000 people in social media. I don't really have a list at all, but I've got these 20,000 people and I can share the giveaway to social. I said, okay, fine, let's give it a try. I will tell you that the way that performed, 20,000 followers on social media is like having 100 people on an email list, if that. In terms of what you're able to drive in terms of action with that audience. So it's very interesting. So you wanna look and see, well, what really is your engagement and your ability to cause your, your followers or the people that are out there on social to, to, to take actions that you're interested in sharing with them? Will they be active and do that or not? Because a really big social following doesn't necessarily equate in the same way that an email list will, okay? Kim, could you uh, please comment or maybe describe what a giveaway is? Yeah, so a giveaway, so think about it this way. So if I go back to lead gen for a minute, a giveaway is if you have something that's super yummy for someone, like a gift, a free gift, like we have um, uh, our 14 point lead gen checklist and people who are interested in lead gen want this checklist, right? Cause it gives them all these ideas they could do for lead gen. And so anyway, so a giveaway is where a lot of people come together, right? That have a similar, uh, like for us, we'd look for people who have, who market to entrepreneurs and small business and coaches and experts. And if, if there was a lot of people that had different audiences, they had different lists, that's, they market to the same kind of people. We wanna pull them together and say, hey guys, let's get together and let's all give away a free gift. And we're gonna create a gift giveaway and all of us will promote that gift giveaway and people will come in and opt into the giveaway so whoever is hosting it gets all the leads, but then everybody has a gift and people will opt in to your particular gift and by doing that, you will grow your list, okay? And that's called the gift giveaway. So we ran that, um, and uh, when we were running, uh, what we just got done running is our, one of our 12-week intensives, implementation intensives, and we ran that for everybody that was in there. And we generated about 720 leads for everybody that was in our 12-week implementation intensive. Um, so that's, that's one really cool way to build your list, right? Um, and there's lots of other ways too, that's just one. But that's a really cool lead gen um, tactic that you could use. Any, any other questions about that? Just be sure and just ask, um, ask nope, Rod. No, what, what no, other, no other questions. Okay, cool. So anyway, so secret number two is really leveraging social to drive people to your site and your list. Okay, so, and, and when we look at your website, the thing that you want to look at is does it take people, does it guide people, or does it just, is it just about you, right? So that's the other thing you want to look at. So let's just look at email marketing. So that's another aspect of online marketing. If you want to be effective, email marketing, quite frankly, is the workhorse of online marketing. It just is. It is the workhorse. It is 4,000% more effective than social media at converting leads into customers, literally. The problem is most people think batch and blast and you can't think that way. The thing that you need is you need to really look at how do you be relevant to people. Now, if you look in your email inbox, you'll see that there's people like, what we get a lot is there's so much clutter, how do I break through the clutter? But if you think about your own inbox and you look at the emails you get that are answering a particular challenge you're faced with, you love those emails, you just don't like the emails that don't pertain to you, that don't pertain to something you're interested in right now, and that's what we mostly get. We mostly get what people wanna send us, not what we wanna receive. And so then when we start doing email marketing, we start treating people the same way. And so there are, there's a system of email marketing that you could actually allow people, if you track and you listen to what people are doing, you can find out exactly what they're interested in. You can segment them using automated tools that allow you to bucket them and segment them so you reach out to them appropriately. 
and get the right message to the right person at the right time. And I call that an email engagement engine for your business. And that's where you get the big bang for the buck. Now, I'm not, it's, these are just things about email deliverability, but if you send the same email out to everybody all the time and you're getting a 20% open rate, that means two people in 10 are actually interested in what you sent. That means eight people are not. Now, that's just out of 10 people. So depending on how many people are in your list and you're getting a 20% open rate, well, 80% of them didn't care that you sent that email. So here's what Google's doing now. They have automated unsubscribe. So if email, if Google notices that you haven't opened an email for, for, you know, and you've gotten several of them, but you've not opened them, say over a 30 day period, they're gonna come up and say, do you wanna unsubscribe from these? And they will handle the unsubscribe automatically. All you have to do is say yes. So I want you to think about that because those people may actually have been interested in something that you wanted to say to them, but you never understood or you never listened to what, in, in terms of what you serve people with, what's the way you could talk to them. And so segmenting and that really rules the day in email marketing. So secret number three is you've got to segment and provide relevant content, okay? So what do I mean by segmenting? Segmenting really and truly, it's about actions. You wanna track their actions. I'm not talking about demographic segmenting or anything like that. What I'm talking about is what are they showing interest in? Because whatever they're showing an interest in, it's gonna cross demographics. And what they're gonna show an interest in is what's gonna cause action for them. When you're interested in something and you have a challenge about something, it, like if I wanna learn how to create an online course, if I want to learn how to create an online course, I'm going to go to that program and I don't care if people in the course are younger than me, older than me, it doesn't matter. We're there for that purpose because I have an interest and someone older can have an interest and some, someone younger can have an interest. It doesn't matter. So I don't have to worry about, am I talking the millennials language? I don't have to worry about that because they're interested in that thing, right? So if you can track what people are interested in, what they're clicking on, what they're looking at, what pages they're looking at, you can start to automatically bucket and segment in a way that then you look at it and you say, you know, I've got a whole bunch of people that are interested in this. Let me, now I know what content I can create. So you're taking them and you're listening and you're letting them lead you to exactly what it is they want. And we have used that strategy effectively across industries, both business to business, business to consumer businesses, and in the education market. We've got continuing ed organizations that send out, they might have professional development courses. They send out one email to fill a course. They might send it to a segment of only 125 people and they have 25 registrations, not only fills the course, they have a waiting list as well. So we're maximizing their revenue right to their bottom line. And we do that over and over across segments. We can see it across our customer base when they implement the strategies that we teach around listening and how you segment. And so you really want to look at that, but you think about it and you're thinking, okay, but you got to really know, you know, it relates to everything else. So if you understand your, your perfect potential customer, your target market, and you get the content, now you're relevant, right? And relevancy trumps frequency. Some, everyone always wants to know, well, how often should I send my emails? Well, the truth is, is as long as you're relevant, you could send one every day if it's relevant. The problem is, is the majority of email that we receive isn't. How you cut through the clutter is be relevant. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the buyer's journey because everybody's on a journey when they're out to buy something, they're at a different stage in their journey and there's different conversations and different copy, different, different ways you want to talk to them depending on where they are. And that brings me to the subject of your website. So a lot of websites, we look at a lot of websites that, that people have. And so when you look at your website, is your website all about you and the services you offer and it has a contact us button um, or a subscribe to blog button? Um, 
So there's all of these, you know, subscribe to blog buttons don't perform very well because people don't know what they're getting. It's just generic. Um, contact us. Let me ask you this. You walk into a store, a salesperson comes up to you and they say, may I help you? And you say, no, thanks. I'm just looking. Nobody wants to have the conversation. So you've got to think about what gets them high up in their buying process, right, way high up. It's where they're curious. They're looking at problem definition. They have questions, just basic high level questions. Um, they might want studies about things. Um, that would be like stay in touch, more like studies and statistics and things so they can really frame up the problem for themselves. That's high up in the buying process. As they get down into the buying process, they want to know, well, what about a particular solution? What really can I do? How can I solve that? They're asking different questions. And as they start winnowing in and getting ready to, to make a purchase, they, they narrow it in. And there's different conversations. You can answer questions. You can address their emotions. You can um, talk about benefits. So there's all of those sorts of things that you can talk about with them, but you wanna take them by the hand and guide them. So one of the things, if we just look at your website and the buyer's journey, because I, I do this because it's one of the things I can focus on um, around this, but you wanna take them right through the journey. You wanna take them by the hand and lead them. You wanna be someone they know and someone they trust. And I know you guys hear the no like trust thing a lot. Probably everybody's heard that. And I like to say they need to know you and they need to trust you. And they don't necessarily need to like you. They just can't hate you. Okay. So, and you'll, they'll do business with you. All right. So, but what they really want is to be able to trust you. They want to know you're an authority that you're not going to lead them down some path that's not going to work for them. So you've got to be able to show that. You've got to be able to take them on a, you know, by the hand and guide them. There's so much noise out there in the world. So what I'm talking about is, what I would say is a lot of sites don't guide. They just have a lot of unsupervised thinking. And then you wonder why people aren't taking the actions you want them to take. So you want to be super deliberate about when they're on a page on your site, what's the number one action you want them to take when they're there? If they don't take that action, what's the second action you want them to take? And that's it. And make sure that those actions are really spelled out. So you're guiding them. You're taking them through that, holding their hand and walking them through what's important. So um, this is the step where, this is where a lot of people, and so right at the beginning, I had you write down attract and I had you write down capture. Next to capture, I want you to know, most people go right from getting a lead to wanting to sell them something. So leave a little bit of space and then type convert because everybody's always interested in conversion, right? So I attract you, I get you into my, onto my list, now I wanna sell you something. And one of the problems with online marketing is that if you skip the step I'm about to, that I've been talking to you about and I'm gonna talk about more, if you skip that step, then you just are always, bombarding them with sales messages and nobody wants to just be sold to consistently. I'm sure you don't want to, your leads don't want to, but you want sales, right? But sometimes you have to be a little bit too headed here. So you can't go directly for that. You've got to do something else. And the something else you've got to do is you've got to captivate them. You've got to give them some really valuable content that moves them an inch the way they want to go and then moves them another inch and then another inch, and they start seeing the progress they're making, and they love you. That's called captivating them. That's called making a difference with them. It's called being uber relevant, right? And that's what you want. So it goes attract, capture, captivate, and then convert. You see what I'm saying? They, they are ready to buy at that point. You're building a raving fan base. You are serving people in a different way. Hugely important. So the secret is don't skip that captivate step. You can't. People try it all the time. And it's what has people just tune you out. You can, they don't want to perceive that you're always trying to get your hand in their wallet. They want to know that you care about them. They want to know that you are going to guide them, that what you have to say actually moves them forward. That's what they want. And so that's what you need to be doing. So secret number four, don't skip the captivate step. Okay, now let's talk about content because this right here 
is what we've talked about in every other set, every other step. Because without content, you can't do anything. And if you don't have the right content because you don't really understand your target market clearly, then this is where it's going to break down is because you won't have the content. Okay? So you want to know that you have got the content. It is, it is, it is critical. Understanding your target market is critical. And then coming up with great, useful, compelling, persuasive, interesting, credible, memorable content is, is, is what you need. If you're going to be on social media, guess what? You got to have great content. You want to do lead generation? Guess what? You got to be able to captivate people. You got to be able to attract them. You got to get their attention and you got to make something really yummy, right? So content is where you've got to really play. Now, I will tell you that not all content works. Um, I know that back in the day, I had, uh, I put together some content and I was so clear that it was the hottest, most amazing content. And this thing was just gonna drive leads like nuts. We were gonna get thousands of leads. It was gonna be amazing. And the title of it was Creating Hot Leads with Today's Technology. Creating Hot Leads with Today's Technology. I think to date we've had about, and this was years ago, I think to date we've had no more than 30 downloads of it. And we've taken it off. We took it off the market, you know, like it's not even available. You can't find it now. Um, but it's one of those things where I was so sure it was so good, right? And then it just completely just flopped. So then I thought maybe it was just too much content. So let me split it up. So we split it up into its constituent parts and subjects and things. And that did a little bit better individually, did a little bit better. But then I ran into this copywriter. And when I ran into this copywriter, I actually created this booklet, a printed booklet called Effective Online Marketing in a Nutshell. And it's this little booklet. And I, and I had a thousand of them printed and I have about 10 of them left. And so if you can see my video, I'm holding it up. It's Effective Online Marketing in a Nutshell. It was about 23 pages is all. And, uh, and so we did this. I have like 10 of them left. They literally flew off the shelves and people love them. It's written a little irreverent. Um, which is great. And it really does take it through and people love this thing. But I had to mail it to them, right? Because it's a printed booklet. And they said, and people said, but Kim, you're talking about online marketing. How come you're not making it downloadable? And I said to them, well, I said, I'll tell you what happens if I made it downloadable versus what I'm doing. So if I made it downloadable, you'd go download it and it would go into a folder. And you'd really, really, really mean to get back to it to read it except for you may never get back to it to read it. But if I send this to you in an envelope, it's gonna come into your inbox. And back when I did this, inboxes were pretty, were pretty empty. I mean, mailboxes were pretty empty. But it comes into your mailbox, and it's a, it's a brown envelope, and you pull it out of the mailbox, and you're like, oh my God, I got my booklet. And then you open it up, and you pull it out, and I have a little letter in there that I sign, it kind of tells you, you know, thank you very much, blah, blah, blah. And then you open and you have your booklet. And you can't help but thumb through that booklet and if not, read the whole thing right then and there. And guess what I have while you're doing that? I have your undivided attention. And that is a commodity that you don't get. I mean, that's not a commodity. The undivided attention in today's world, that's unheard of, right? Everybody's multitasking, they're doing so much. And so, that's what I did. So now we actually did, so this was, this was years ago and now we only have about 10 of them left. Um, but we actually did take this booklet and we put it into a PDF and it's called the 10 keys to online marketing with WordPress is what we renamed it because we came up with a new product called WP Marketing Engine, which is WordPress Marketing Engine, which is a new software product that we have. And so when we did that, we decided we would put it out as a PDF. Um, and so, but that's the thing is that what you want and people are loving that, right? Because it's, it's basically an update of what we wrote here. And so that's the thing is that you want to make sure your content is, is there. Now, the second thing is content is forever. So some of you are like, oh my God, content. Um, but content is a forever thing. So you want to be able to give yourself 
a way and a breakthrough around creating content. Because if you don't have great content, you can't do a lot. Your, your marketing is gonna break down, whether you're creating webinars, whether you're creating downloads, whether you're creating blog posts, whether you're creating videos, podcasts, whatever they are, that's all content. So whatever floats your boat there, that's fine, but you gotta do it and you gotta be consistent about it. And the consistency will help drive those results. You'll end up building a platform, okay? So we are very big proponents of blogging and having a blog on your website. Why? Because it gives you a platform. Now, whether you do an audio or video or you do written, I don't care whatever floats your boat because they can all be converted into all those different types of content, all those different media. But what you got to get is into producing content on a regular basis because that is the name of the game when it comes to online marketing. Okay. So the secret for number five is content is your key to results. So you want to figure out how you can give yourself, create a breakthrough so that content for you becomes easy. That the content that you need to be relevant for your target perfect potential customer is what you want to start having facility with because the easier it gets for you and the more, and the more you get what your voice is and how to do that, the better your results will be. And so those are the five secrets. Okay. So I can go back through them really, really quick, just as a summary. So secret number one is know your target audience. Secret number two is leverage social to drive people to your site. Secret number three is you must segment and be relevant as it relates. And then we're talking about email marketing there, but you've got to be able to segment and be relevant to your leads. Secret number four, don't skip the captivate step. Don't go attract, capture, convert. Do attract, capture, captivate and convert, really build your authority and your trust. And then content goes through every single one of those. It is your key to results. Kim, uh, that's about the best explanation of uh, online marketing, specifically email marketing, that I've heard in a long, long time. You said an awful lot in a very, short number of words and slides. On behalf of VBN, I thank you and congratulate you. Attendees, I'm going to stop recording, but don't go away. Kim has some more words of wisdom for you. All right.